to show these young boys. They don't know what hit them. <laughs> yeah, let me just stretch it out a little bit. Yeah, you got me, young boy? All right, all right. Yeah, yeah I'm just loosening up. Hit him with my little knee joint I like to do. <laughs> ah, hey, 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 hey. That's how I loosen up right there, yeah. Yeah, I'm just stretching him out, man. I ain't trying to get hurt. I ain't getting hurt out here because of these young boys, you know what I mean? All right. Whew. All right, we ready? We ready? You know what I mean? Uh, people don't tuck their shirts on no more? All right. All right, whatever. All right, let's go. Check ball. All right, come on. Play some D, boy. Play some D. Oh, man, what the jab. I always start with the jab. Jab. Tap. Oh, he ain't going nowhere. All right. I'm going to just go past him. All right. Come on. Mm, come on. Don't don't feel. Go past him. There's my move. Oh, this young boy got D. Let me back. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, I'm going to hit him with the pump. 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 Pump fake. All right. All right. Give me the ball back. Come on. All right. I'm going to go past him now. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good D. Good D, young boy. All right. All right. All right. Get out the way. Get out the way. I'm about to go to my signature move. All right, so now I'm going to go hard to my left like I'm going left, right? I know you're going to reach. Then I'm going to throw it behind my back. And then I'm going to go hard right like I'm going to the hole because he's off balance now. Then I'm going to yank it back on him, right? Mm. Now he think he's going to block my shots. So I hit him with the hands. He go flying by. Now was time for the one step dunk. Get up. <sighs> oh my God. Was I just grounded? Well, at least it went in. All right, okay. What just happened though? Lord, I hope my daughters ain't just see that. Good Lord. Was that rim always that high? I think that's 10 and a half feet. All right, just get back on DC. It's a long game. It's going to be a long game. Hey, good morning. What's up? This is Mr. Langhorn coming to you from Biology Corner. Today, we're talking about the nervous system, the most extraordinary organ in the human body, the brain. So what happened out there? Playing ball like I always do. Been missing for a long time. My brain did what it was supposed to do. My cerebellum sent the command to my cerebral cortex, which controls my body movements. And my brain is saying, look, this is what we do. You've been doing this your whole life. Let's get on the court and do it. And that's what our brain is supposed to do because it is programming our minds that I've been playing ball forever. So I can get on the court and play ball forever. But what happens? What happens is as you get older and you go missing from that sport for a while, your body might not respond to the commands from your brain. Your muscular system, your skeletal system may not respond. So my brain is doing what it's supposed to do. It's telling me to go to the left, go to the right, jump and dunk it. But my body didn't respond. Why is that? I'll tell you why. I'm glad you asked. It's because as you get older and you remove yourself from a sport, whether you're a dancer, a boxer, a track athlete, basketball player, football player, and then you try to get right back into it, your body may not respond to the brain's commands. Remember, your muscular system works on motor memory. It's just like you have something in your brain called a procedural memory. The procedural memory is things that you just never forget how to do. Driving a car. You could pick up a bike after 10 years and ride that bike. Swimming. Uh, typing, all these different things. If you have a shooting form, you never lose that shooting form because you did it so much, it goes into your motor memory and it just gets stuck in your procedural memory. You always do it every single time. However, when you move away from that sport or that dance or that football field and you try to get back, your muscle's not ready. They haven't done it in a while. There's no more explosion. They've changed. Maybe you just work out now and you just lift weights. That's different from running, cutting, jumping hitting people, throwing a football, throwing a pitch. The next thing you know, you wake up the next day and you're all sore. And your skeletal system might not respond. Remember, your knee joints break down over time. When you start your two knee joints, they have a nice little cushion of cartilage. So every time you hit the impact, the cartilage stops the two bones from connecting every time you jump. But over the years, and you're doing this, and you're doing this, and you're running, and you're jumping, guess what? That cartilage starts to break down to the point 
where there is nothing but bone on bone. And when you get to bone on bone, that's when all the pain starts. You get arthritis, your ligaments break on the sides or in the middle, your ACL or your MCL. Now you're having surgeries, you're having a knee replacement, and your knee's looking like mine. That's what it looks like now, 20 years later. But the most amazing thing about your brain is you can reprogram your brain. You can reprogram your brain. You can reprogram your brain. When you think thoughts or you do something over and over again, you actually build a pattern of synapses in your brain that sends signals to your neurons in different parts of your brain because you do it all the time and it becomes a habit. We can also do that negatively. When you think about negative thoughts and, and triggers that make you go back to something that a song can trigger you back to a moment in your life, a person can trigger you back to a moment in your life where those synapses that you made a pattern of, which is negative, automatically comes back. But I'm here to tell you, you can reprogram those synapses in your brain. You can create a new pattern in your brain. The way you do it, I'm glad you asked. As soon as those negative thoughts come up, you got to capture them and replace them with a positive affirmation. I'm never going to get this done. You're going to get this done. I can't make this. Keep practicing. You're going to make this shot. It takes time. Most people say it takes 21 days. I believe it takes longer. And that's something that you have to do daily, daily, all the time. And it actually will reprogram how you think. That's why when you do sports, and this is a message to my coaches, um, when you got a player and you're constantly demeaning them, and every time they miss two shots, they're coming out the game, you are developing a pattern in their brain that when they get on that court, they can't play confidently because they know when they miss two shots, I'm coming out the game. I got to start looking over my shoulder. So now you like you got them playing tight. It goes with any sport. But if you build a player's confidence and you say, listen, if it's a good shot, take the shot. It starts to build a pattern of positive energy in their brain. If you think of your brain as a dynamic, connected power grid, there are billions of pathways or roads lighting up every time you think, feel, or do something. Some of these roads are well-traveled. These are our habits our established ways of thinking, feeling, and doing. Every time we think in a certain way, practice a particular task, or feel a specific emotion, we strengthen this road. It becomes easier for our brains to travel this pathway. Say we think about something differently, learn a new task, or choose a different emotion. We start carving out a new road. If we keep traveling that road, our brains begin to use this pathway more and this new way of thinking, feeling, or doing becomes second nature. The old pathway gets used less and less and weakens. This process of rewiring your brain by forming new connections and weakening old ones is neuroplasticity in action. The good news is that we all have the ability to learn and change by rewiring our brains. If you have ever changed a bad habit or thought about something differently, you have carved a new pathway in your brain and experienced neuroplasticity firsthand. With repeated and directed attention towards your desired change, you can rewire your brain. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go downstairs. I'm going to post on my smart board. I mean, it's not a smart board, but it's still a smart board. And you guys are gonna see the brain. What I want you to copy down, I'm actually gonna send you the link. We're not gonna do our notes like we usually do. I'm trying to make my videos shorter and smarter and get as much um, information out as I can in a short period of time. All right, so let's go downstairs. I said before, you guys will be taking notes on the key parts of the brain. For your topic objective, I want you to list the nervous system slash brain. So once again, for your topic objective, you're gonna list the nervous system slash brain. And your essential question for today will be, what are the major parts of the brain? What are the major parts of the brain? Now I highlighted all the sections that I wanted you guys to copy down the key points that you're gonna need for your open note test next week. Remember you are able to use all three video notes 
after this last video and you will be able to use it on the test next week. The test will be based on only the notes that you have been taking from these videos. First, we need to copy down in the yellow. It says the brain contains billions of neurons and other supporting tissue. The brain processes, relays, and forms responses to an unbelievable amount of information every moment. I'm going to continue to move on. Remember, you can just pause whenever you need to. Copy down the notes. Unpause. Go to the next section. Next up, cerebrum. The largest region of the human brain is the cerebrum. The cerebrum is responsible for the voluntary or conscious activities of the body. It is the site of intelligence, learning, and judgment. The cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex processes information from the sense organs and controls body movements. I spoke about that earlier. It is also where thoughts, plans, and learning are processed. Cerebral cortex. The limbic system has the amygdala, has been associated with emotional learning. This includes fear and anxiety, as well as the formation of long-term memories. Whenever you are put in an unfamiliar situation, your amygdala is like your panic button for your brain. The hypothalamus recognizes and analyzes hunger, thirst, fatigue, anger, and body temperature. The second largest region of the brain is the cerebellum. Information about muscle and joint position and other sensory inputs are sent to the cerebellum. And lastly, the brainstem, located just below the cerebellum, connects the brain and spinal cord. The brainstem includes three regions, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. Each region regulates the flow of information between the brain and the rest of the body. Those are the key points I want you guys to know for the test next week. Make sure you get it down on your Cornell notes, and I will see you next time. Mr. Langhorn signing out from Biology Corner.